Kati on KTN News, where we are following for you all the developing stories in the country and across the world. And at the moment, I'm going to join our reporter, Alpha shortly, where we are waiting any moment from now for the remains of the body of the let of second liberation icon Kenneth Matiba is set to be cremated any moment from now. Those are pictures we have for you from the Langata Cemetery. I'm going to link up with the Alphas any moment from now. We understand that the court has uh, already indicated that uh, the Let Matiba should be compensated about is it 900 million shillings. But apparently there's so many other pending Nyaya House and other torture claims they are yet, that are yet to be settled by the Kenyan government. The president himself yesterday made clear that he, together with all Opposition leader Raila Odinga are going to institute a special committee to cater for heroes' welfare. Now in studio, I have an individual who understands this subject really well. His name is Washira Waheire, who is the coordinator National Victims and Survivors Network and also once served in the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission. Good afternoon, Mr. Washira. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Now we've seen that development. Of course, the court has met. It's ruling that, you know, the Let Matiba should be compensated. Perhaps can you talk us through some of the other individuals who are awaiting compensation up until now? Uh, thank you, Yusuf. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to begin with, I would uh, want, on behalf of the National Victims and Survivors Network, also offer our condolence to the family and friends of the late uh, KSN Matiba. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, I would also want to point out that uh, what has happened is that uh, the issue of uh, compensation or being paid has come up, uh, has been amplified uh, after the passing on of uh, Matiba. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this way, the, there are other people who are actually compensated before Matiba. Yes. Uh, some cases go back as uh, far back as 2013. Mm -hmm. I can mention a name, uh, somebody like uh, Israel Agina. Mm -hmm. He's been calling for his uh, payment, which has been pending in government. Up until now? Up, to, up, up till now, it mm -hmm. has not been paid. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are quite a number. I see you have a list of all these people. But first, yes. before you take us through some of the names, perhaps, in your list, mm -hmm. I'm sure Koigo Amor is also one of them. He is there. So, there. yeah, the president mm -hmm. yesterday said that he will work with Raila Odinga to come up with some sort of a special committee to take care of the welfare of, you know, the heroes and heroines. Perhaps do you think this is the right, the right step, the right, the right step towards you know settling these claims we are talking about? Uh, one, I wouldn't uh, say yes or no, mm -hmm. but uh, I would think that there is a better framework, yes. which actually was uh, foreseen by His Excellency the President way back in 2015, mm -hmm. when he established uh, or he ordered the establishment of the Restorative Justice Fund. Yeah. That was in, uh, during his State of the Nation address in March uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, he had uh, ordered for the establishment of a 10 billion fund, which was to look into these historical injustices, yes. among now the claims that we are talking about. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, what has uh, been very frustrating to victims who expected, whose expectations were very high when uh, somebody not less than the uh, president of the republic ordering something and it does not happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were hopeful that uh, that fund would have addressed most of these claims mm -hmm. for many. And you know, they go back as far back as 1992. There are people who lost their lives during the, 92, the 1992 PV uh, uh, clashes. Yes. The 2000 and, uh, 1997, there are mm -hmm. people who died during the, you know, I think uh, there should be a more comprehensive process of identifying these people because a committee which, because what we've been having, because after, after the president established that, we've been engaged uh, with uh, some people within the, the, the government, in the mm -hmm. attorney general's office, trying to come up with a, a legal framework, how that money can be disbursed. Mm -hmm. But uh, government works in a very bureaucratic way. Yeah. It has not happened up to today. We've come up with a policy. We've come up with the regulations to guide that restorative justice fund. Mm -hmm. But as up to now, we hope that uh, what His Excellency the president was saying and, and, and promising Kenyans with, together with the right honorable of creating a committee is not another uh, opportunity just to assuage the feelings of victims that uh, now that Matiba has passed on. Mm -hmm. I think it should be a more serious effort because this thing needs to heal the country. There are uh -huh. so many people who are hurting 
up to now. Mm -hmm. They went through, they lost their loved ones. They were, some were sexually molested during the, the various uh, uh, PEV uh, incidences since 97, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, 92 to 2017. There are people, and, victims, uh -huh. just a minute, mm -hmm. who live with the wounds, mm -hmm. live wounds. Some of them, they were burned. Mm -hmm. Some lost their lives, uh, loved ones. Mm -hmm. Some live with bullets lodged in their bodies and they've not been uh, uh, removed because for lack of medical uh, ability to have these things done. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, other than, I think the government should be serious this time around. Yes, that begs the question. I see mm -hmm. you have a long list here. Mm -hmm. What criteria is the government using to, mm -hmm. you know, compensate some of the individuals within, within this list. Because there's a feeling out there that if you don't come from a certain class, especially the political class, if you're just a common person, a, you know, a Kenyan citizen for that matter, then you, your claim cannot be settled easily. And you see now, that is the basis because, like I mentioned to you, mm -hmm. I happen to have worked with the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission. And we went around this country yes. talking to ordinary people who had suffered certain violations, mm -hmm. uh, gross human rights violations. And uh, they, there's a record somewhere uh, within the database of the, the, the work of the TGRC. Mm -hmm. That could be a starting point as a basis to identify because they came and gave their, 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 their testimonies. Yeah. They gave their, the, the, so the idea is now to, to streamline that, to identify them, to, you know, uh, to save from that database. Mm -hmm. And then there were other people who never had an opportunity of engaging with the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission, but they're still victims and they have stories. They have evidence that they suffer, they've suffered historically. Mm -hmm. These are people who, who can, their, their, their names are known, their records are known, their violations are known. Mm -hmm. So it is just a matter of having a working formula, mm -hmm. because some of these formulas may not work. But if we are serious about addressing historical uh, injustices, then there's an opportunity, because there are basically there are records which are already in existence, mm -hmm. and they can be the starting point of doing that. Do you think that. these are some of the records that perhaps the special committee the president is talking about that is going to form together with the opposition leader, Raila Dinger, do you think these are some of the records that they should perhaps look in Absolutely. to make their work easier? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it would be a good idea to start with those records. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, th that way they'll be able to start getting somewhere mm -hmm. because already these records are in, in existence. Mm -hmm. And yeah. while making that announcement, of course, he made that an announcement yesterday during the memorial service of the late Kenneth Matiba. The president said that there is need to learn to appreciate heroes when they are still alive because there's a tendency that, you know, people start celebrating so-and-so, perhaps, you know, someone who has fought for our independence, people who fought for, you know, who have been jailed without trial, people who have been tortured, perhaps, during the uh, fight for multi-party democracy. There's a tendency that people tend to celebrate them more when they're dead and not alive. Yeah, that is actually, it is, it is a gross injustice to these heroes, mm -hmm. uh, as far as I look at it. In fact, even when I was watching uh, the events yesterday, mm -hmm. I was uh, a bit perplexed mm -hmm. because uh, there's one national hero who, for a reason or another, he was not mentioned. He's called Bildad Kagia. Mm -hmm. He is one of the Kapenguria six. Yes. But he was not, you know, he's not pensioned, although we know that uh, they, maybe they could have had uh, differences in ideologies with uh, the, some of his But he's still a hero. Yeah, he's still mm -hmm. a hero. And we the, cannot rule out that and he's still and a hero. There's this quote I saw somewhere, it's very interesting. They're saying mm -hmm. that a country without a past cannot have much of its future. I you know, you have to that. recognize people from the past for you to like know how your future is going to look like. And that brings to question, there's this, uh, the let uh, Winnie Mandela, the lady who passed just the other day, the South Africa's former first lady. I, I, I read from somewhere that she came to Kenya, asked for, you know, Den and Kimadi's wife or even relatives. Mm -hmm. And the government of the day then did not even know where they were. They didn't even know their whereabouts. I mean, what does that say about the seriousness government has or lack of it for that matter towards our heroes and heroines? Yeah, I think uh, I, re I recall that history. I think mm -hmm. even uh, even uh, Nelson Mandela, I think, came, he's the one who came to this yes. country, and mm -hmm. he was not. Uh, I didn't. He didn't have an opportunity of meeting the wife of uh, because he wanted to, mm -hmm. but he couldn't. So I think there is a, a contradiction in terms like uh, like uh, when heroes are in existence, mm -hmm. they are not recognized, but uh, when they pass on. I think that's when, uh, it's ironical, I, I, it, it's hard to fathom mm -hmm. how uh, the th that thinking comes about because it would have been more important if these people are re recognized during their existence. Mm -hmm. You see, if it is like a fund which is to address, like for ex example, there are so many Mau Mau freedom mm -hmm. fighters mm -hmm. who live in, in, uh, in Kwanda, you know, in Kwanda, they are, yes. they are poor. Mm -hmm. But uh, despite the contribution that they made to have this country free, mm -hmm. 
as we speak, they're still living in absolute poverty. Washira, mm -hmm. we really appreciate what you're doing. Finally, okay. as we wrap up our discussion this afternoon, mm -hmm. can you pass t perhaps take us through some of the names that you have in your list that their, 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 their claims are yet to be settled by government? Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll highlight just a few. There's mm -hmm. uh, one uh, called, uh, this is now I'm talking about their widows who have been running up and And these down. are people not known in the political class, they right? They are not known, mm -hmm. they are not known. One is Kabasele Ocheng, mm -hmm. one, the other one is Karoiro Miano, mm -hmm. The other one is uh, Pascal Omilo Wandera, mm -hmm. Hezbon Otino Donji, Muloma, Israel again I had mentioned, mm -hmm. Maina, John Maina Kamangara mm -hmm. who was a prominent Kenyan, yes. uh, Florence Wakuru Wainaina, mm -hmm. Mukaru Nganga who has also fought for this country and is... Uh, is uh, His claims are yet to be settled up has, to now. It has not been How settled. much is he claiming? He's cla he was awarded 15 million. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and then there is a, another group which uh, suffered a lot in this country, the mm -hmm. people who are soldiers in the X-82 Air Force. Yes. There are about over 300 of them. Mm -hmm. The government, the court has actually determined that these people's uh, violations were violated, mm -hmm. the rights were violated, they were subjected to torture. Mm -hmm. uh, but although the court said they should be compensated, mm -hmm. as we speak, they've not been compensated. Mm -hmm. And then I would also want to mention people like Joseph Geduku, Pamela Aoko, David Odiambo, and uh, victims of political assassinations mm -hmm. like uh, J.M. Karioki, uh, J. Uh, Taita Sadungosi, yeah. uh, all these people, and even the recent ones now after, if you move out from the context of the TGRC, they mm -hmm. are the recent victims of the 2017 post-election uh, violence. Yes. Like uh, uh, people like uh, uh, Bibi Pendo, mm -hmm. uh, Mora, the Ndabuki, the young ones. Sure. And the recent now, as we speak, the just recent uh, 2017 elections, mm -hmm. there are people who suffered as a result of uh, the election uh, contestations. I mean... It should not happen because I, I, I don't try, I, I try to imagine how a Kenyan can pick up a gun and shoot another Kenyan. Mm -hmm. I'm not, unable to, to understand how that reasoning. Do we have that feeling of uh, us thinking as Kenyans? Because the leaders are talking about bringing this country mm -hmm. together and to have a country called. And above Kenya. all, jailing people without trial. Yes, Thank yes. you uh, mm -hmm. very much, Washira Waihire, for yeah. your input. He's mm -hmm. the coordinator National Victims and Survivors Network at Kenya. You also served uh, formerly in the through. The, Justice Reconciliation Commission. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for your input. Now over to our next story now. The eldest son to Kenyan media mogul SK Masharia has passed on. John Masharia died last night at the Karen Hospital where he had been taken after a freak crash on the southern bypass. Karen police boss Cunningham Suyanka confirmed that there was a crash at 10 p.m. on the southern bypass. His passenger, however, survived the crash. The accident happened at 10 p.m. when John, who is said to have been speeding, lost control of his uh, Porsche Cayenne 911. John was the director and founder of uh, Triple Air Finance and a direct, uh, direct line insurance. Course, those are the pictures of that terrible accident that claimed the son of media mogul SK Masharia. Now, over to another developing report, and there's a group called Diaspora Alliance who are having a briefing at this moment the National CSO Forum, the Kenya Diaspora Alliance, and the International Center for Transitional Justice, ICT, held a media briefing this morning during which they urged for a more inclusive national process to promote healing in the country. Let's listen into part of that briefing earlier. And friends of Kenya from all walks of life must seize this opportunity and support this cause for national conversation as a great opportunity that the country has to rebuild itself, to redeem itself from all the injustices. And therefore, this will help us move from reimagining the Kenya we want to a new, just, cohesive, prosperous, and peaceful Kenya. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for uh, highlighting the key points uh, about the National Mediation Forum uh, way forward. I think 
Uh, we will now welcome um, one or two comments, uh, both from uh, um, uh, Chris and also uh, 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 Dr. Shemo Chuodo. But we will start from the immediate. Uh, uh, you can make comments before before Chris. Very brief comments. Yes, thank you. And an introduction. Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, my name is Susan Owiro Chege. I belong to Partnership for Peace and Security, but a member of the Just Peace Community, Just Peace Practitioners. Uh, my key interest here is uh, to look at the inclusion bit. Inclusion is usually very elusive, especially when you're talking about the marginalized, uh, the special interest group, the women. We would want this to be as practical as possible. Even when you're bringing them on board, you're not bringing them as adding numbers, but bringing them as adding value to the entire dialogue. It's very, very important that we take cognizance of their presence, of their voices, since we are talking about not leaving any voice behind, but bringing everything, everybody on board. That is our call. Let's bring them on board and be very practical in the value addition that they are giving to our dialogue process. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm um, Chris Wakube from uh, Safe World. Because there is a group calling itself Diaspora Alliance, talking about the need to have a national healing. Now, children, Children's Rescue Center in Naivasha has been closed down after it was flooded following the ongoing heavy rains. Now, the administration regrets sending the over 100 children back to homes where they had been abused. The Catholic owned St. Teresa Rehabilitation and Development Center is the only such center in Naivasha that takes care of sexually abused minors. The gushing waters also destroyed medical equipment worth millions of shillings and drugs at the health center within the facility. The center was shared by the children under rehabilitation and the neighboring communities. Let's listen to what the people there had to say first. Hata kuingia na mungu kwa center ni shida kwa sasa. So hile kitu muhimu zaidi, nituweza kupata barabara. Barabara ikitengezwa, tuweza kufungua center, tufungue clinic, at least services yaze kuwezi kiendelea pole pole. Very sad development there in Naivasha. Now, let me take you over to some developing news across the world and North and South Korea today. Marked a historic moment after the two sides, the two Koreas, met for the first time in over a decade. The summit is expected to tackle various issues, including nuclear technology and sanctions to separated families. Fatia Mohamed Noor has more details on that report. <laughs> North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in shake hands as he crossed the demarcation line that divides the two countries ahead of the two Koreas' first summit in more than a decade. Kim Jong-un crossed the border into South Korea for the first time in over 60 years after the Korean War. Kim invited his South Korean counterpart to reciprocate and cross to the other side that is divided by a low cement block in the middle of the border village. The two were met on the red carpet by a South Korean honor guard in historical costumes playing traditional music. Kim and Moon walked into the Peace House, venue of the summit, where Kim signed a guest visitor book of writing, A New History Begins Now. The first and second inter-Korean summits were held in Pyongyang, North Korea's capital, in 2000 and 2007, respectively. Kim became the first DPRK leader to set foot on South Korean soil since the end of the 1950 to 1953 Korean War. Fatiha Mohammed Noor, KTN News. Of course, there is a major news coming out of the Korean Peninsula. That report from Korea takes a news desk to a very short break. But we are going to come back very shortly. Stay with us because I can see Moses Wachisi getting ready uh, and is going to tell us more on all the big stories happening in the world of sports. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 